Today, we are going to talk about something every single one of us takes for granted, our breath. Did you know that we breathe about 20,000 breaths in a single day? You guys, 20,000. Breathing is our actual life force. It's what keeps us alive. Well, what if I told you, though, that our breath can do a lot more than just keep us alive? What if I told you it can help us come down from an anxiety attack, fall asleep quicker, energize our bodies before a big presentation, and even boost our mood? Well, guess what? Our breathing can do all of those things and so much more. Today, you will be hearing the story of Maxwell Gomez. Max is the co-founder and CEO of Breathwork, a recently launched app that teaches different breathing techniques for different circumstances. These breathing techniques are used by Olympic athletes, psychologists, yoga experts, Navy SEALs, and Zen masters. So this app launched on November 1st, 2019, and it has already been downloaded all over the globe 1 million times, and it was featured in Goop as one of the best breathing apps. I am really excited to tell you guys that you are actually listening to a monumental episode because this is the first breathwork interview ever. When this app becomes as popular as Instagram, you will get to say that you experienced the first ever interview about the app with its founder. I am so honored to be sharing the story because I know it's going to provide you with a different perspective about your breath and give you back control. You're listening to the Cultivating Curiosity podcast, where everyone has a story to share. This is the story of Max Gomez, CEO of Breathwork. My name is Maxwell Gomez, and I am the co-founder and CEO of Breathwork Incorporated. Today, Max lives in California, but he actually grew up in a really small town in New Jersey. Now, when I say small, I mean small. I'm talking a total population of 4,000 people small. So from living in New Jersey for the last three years, it's actually really hard for me to believe that such a small town exists in this state. (laughs) But anyways, back to Max's story. As a child, Max had a very creative and active mind, which made concentrating in the classroom pretty difficult. Max even described school feeling like a prison. He was the type of kid you'd find drawing during class and making YouTube videos after school. This was his way of expressing his creativity. Despite being a very creative child, Max would tell people as he got older that he wanted to be a doctor or a neurosurgeon when he grew up because he wanted to impress. He knew these titles sounded fancy and they hold a lot of weight in society. So fast forwarding to post high school graduation, Max packs his bags and moves cross country to the sunny state of California, where he studies neuroscience at the University of Southern California. Max is the type of man that wants to figure out all of the answers. Specifically, he wanted to understand why humans function the way we do, and he had a desire to understand why his own brain worked the way it did. He was fascinated with this mind-body connection that we all have innately within us. So Max is studying neuroscience, and then junior year, he decides to take up a minor in entrepreneurship. During this time, he realized how much he enjoyed learning about business and helping people. Max found himself taking on a lot of jobs and internships that exposed him to the inner workings of a business, specifically startup companies. Four years later, graduation rolls around and Max landed a position at a multi-million dollar sports psychology company. 
from the outside, it looks like Max's life is pretty set. You know, he's living in beautiful California. He has that chief product officer title on his business card. Life is good. But nobody knows what goes on behind closed doors. But I've worked there for around eight months and, you know, I just had a horrible experience. My my boss was uh, was not very nice, not very friendly. And um, he, I, I do credit him for teaching me a lot and mm-hmm. investing in me and in me learning. Um, there I was a chief product officer um, and it was, it was it was a multi-million dollar company at the time. So it was a pretty big title for coming right out of college and doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, I just kind of realized how not to manage people and how not to treat people. And, you know, that kind of evoked a lot of anxiety within me and, you know, always wondering, you know, if you're going to get fired or, or what's going or what's going on next or, you know, if you're doing good or bad in the company is, is, is a stressful feeling. And, and I didn't like the way that he imposed that upon me and the other employees in the company. Um, so that was a stressful time in my life. And then, you know, it happened to be another time my grandmother, who was, you know, a mother figure to me, passed away. Um, so that was another big stressor in my life. And then another breakup happened right after that. So, you know, almost a two, two year relationship, like three year friendship, um, broke apart at that time. So it was a lot going on in three months for me. And it caused me to really, really, really have terrible, terrible anxiety, like debilitating anxiety. Um, and I think back, like that was one of the, the lowest points in my life, but also one of the most, you know, it was one of the most point is the most testing point in my life because it just proved how strong someone can become. Um, because at that point I was just completely lost. I like, you know, I didn't want to work in my job anymore. I felt like I had no friends. I invested so much in a relationship. Um, you know, I kind of lost that, that motherly loving figure that was my grandmother. Um, and it was weighing heavy on me. And I remember I was living in Santa Monica at the time I was sitting in my, my bed. I'm like, I, I don't know what the fuck to do. Like I'm, I just feel so lost and, and lonely and I just don't know what to do. So, uh, I went to go to a therapist, um, because, you know, at the point when you're spending almost an entire month in bed and you're losing 15 pounds, I think, you know, it's time to do something. So, so I went and went and saw a therapist and, um, you know, it, it was life changing for me. Like, like I think, I think therapy is a great thing and a beautiful thing that everyone should go and, and experience because whether you're going through a dark time or not, it's just, you need to have a soundboard. You need to have a different thoughts and opinions coming into you because it's really important for life. And one of the first things he taught me to, you know, really take care of my anxiety was meditation. And I tried to meditate with him. And I think most people are like this. It was just so hard to do, like sitting there with your eyes closed, like you're wondering if you're doing it right. Like you have all these thoughts come in. You're wondering, like, should you be thinking? Should you not be thinking? And it just doesn't feel like it's not an easy practice to pick up. And it takes so long to master meditation. And it didn't work for me. And then the second thing was like, okay, like we could try medication. And because of my background in neuroscience, I always want to stay away from medication because I know that it can, you know, cause you know different kind of imbalance in your brain and coming off of medication can be tough. So I just didn't, I just want to push for more something more organic and natural. And so he's like, all right. And the third thing that he taught me was breathing exercises. And I remember sitting on his couch and I was just, you know, he's taught me this simple exercise, breathing through your nose, act like there's a balloon in your belly, inhale for four seconds, and then exhale to deflate the balloon in your belly for six seconds. And I did that for probably like 15 seconds, and I felt so much better instantly. I felt like <laughs> control over my body for the first time in a long time. Like my, my mind was starting to slow down. I was able to calm down. I was able to lower my heart rate. And it was just something so powerful. And it was one of the biggest pieces I picked up from therapy at that time. I remember coming back every week and be like, oh, like, here's how are things going? Like, they're great. I keep doing the breathing exercises. They're really, really helpful for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I really thought, I really, I really didn't think like there was anything there. I just thought it was like a personal practice for myself. So I started to implement it daily because I needed it. Like there was a time where, like I, you know, I was, I was so anxious. Like I, I could barely stay out of the house for a couple hours. Like it was just such a horrible time. But then I just used breathing to stay out longer and longer and increase my endurance and and lower my anxiety. And over time, I was able to like, you know, break the cycle of just being in an anxious state all the time through breathing. Um, and then fast forward, you know, I'm, I'm doing a lot better, come out of anxiety, no longer depressed. And um, I'm just like living my life and breathing and meeting new people and, and, you know, have all this new, I feel like empowered from this new skill that I learned, which is just breathing. Like whenever I needed it, I could just use it. If I was nervous to go talk to someone, I could use it. If I was nervous about work or about life I could just use this simple tactic that was always in my back pocket and it was such an empowering thing and then 
Um, so the story goes where I, uh, I, I'm still working at the place at the time. I still have that boss. I don't know how he didn't fire me when I was, I was in my lowest point cause I was, you know, producing probably zero work, but I'm grateful that he kept me for as long as he did. And he caused another anxiety attack in me. And this was like months and months and months later mm-hmm. after, you know, I, I was doing fine from, from therapy and everything. And he, and, um, and like it caused an anxiety attack in me. I'm like, oh crap, like this is intense. So I remembered doing the breathing exercise. And then right after I finished, you know, a couple of minutes of it, I go to the app store and I'm wondering if anyone has like built an app and verticalized the breathing market. Cause I knew there were so many other, you know, breathing, you know, formulas and breathing exercises out there. And to my surprise, there really wasn't any out there. Um, you know, common headspace there did have done amazing jobs in meditation. But I think breathing is just something so different that it needs its own industry. And when I saw that there was this giant opportunity there, I just felt compelled to do something about it. And it happened to be that my boss that week, after, two weeks after, was going on vacation. So those two weeks he goes on vacation and I'm like, okay, I'm going to give myself these two weeks to go as far as I can into this you know, company. I'm going to call it breath work. I'm going to see how far I can go with it. So... I, you know, put together a pitch deck. I put together the interface, which is the interface we see right now. Um, I put together a website, start collecting emails. I put together a business plan, and I'm just like hyper focused on this one task. It's just some, it's just like some weird thing happened where I just felt so focused on building this product in these two weeks because I just felt so passionate about it. Um, so at the end of the two weeks, that's up. And I'm just like, you know, I have this in my back pocket. Maybe I'll meet someone who can, you know, go and, and start this company with me. Lo and behold, three days later, one of my old mentors invites me over and she's like, let's have a brainstorming session with my friend. She's extremely successful. She started, you know, $100 million advertising companies before. She used to be at Twitter. She sits on the board of a bunch of other companies and advisor for this and that. I'm like, awesome. Like, I'll love to meet her because, you know, I've always pinned myself with successful people and I always wanted to learn from them. So I go and meet her and her name is Addie and I show her what I was working on. So I show her my pitch deck that I made for breath work. And within like 45 seconds of me showing her, she looks me in the eyes and she's like, do you want to partner with me on this? And <laughs> me, you know, I'm like, of course, like a hundred percent with you on this. Like, um, you know, I'm 23. Like I like, this is a huge opportunity. She's so successful and she's just such a great energy. So I said yes on the spot. And then just a couple seconds later, she pulls out her phone and she opens the notes in her phone. And one of the top notes in her phone was create a breathwork app. Oh so, my gosh, Max. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Is that fate or what? It, it's, it's just something, it's like you can't think about it too much because it's just like, it's one of those moments in your life where it's like winning the lottery. It's yeah. like, no way, this all just kind of worked out. Mm-hmm. Um, and the thing was like, she discovered breathwork from a completely different way that I discovered breathwork, but we both saw the giant hole in the market and someone needed to build a product and create the literature and the industry around breathing. Um, so from that point forward, like we were inseparable, like we, we became like best friends. She's almost, she's older than me. She's, um, 38, I'm 23 and we became best friends. We're, we're, we're hanging every day. Like I'm learning so much from her. We're meeting all these people and we're just trying to get this thing done. So like, all right, um, we'll give ourselves a couple months to see, you know, if we could put this on the app store, see what happens. You know, maybe we'll get some investors, but we'll just test it. So luckily she had the means to invest in building the, the first product. And we built the first product and we launched it November 1st. And we didn't know what was going to happen. It was kind of scary. It's like one of those points where you even put a lot of work and effort into something and you didn't know what was going to happen. And, and at that time, I actually, I actually left my job. So I, I had um, two months two months of rent left in my bank account. And that was, you know, this is my, this is my chance. I was going to go try to try to put breath work out there. And, you know, the first day, a couple thousand installs, second day, a couple more thousand. And then it just kept happening and growing and growing so fast. And then we started meeting all these people who want to help out, introduce us to investors and this and that. And, you know, we started to build a community and just seeing all the the reviews like in the early beginning it was just like amazing for me and I, I still wake up every morning and look at the reviews of the app and it's the first thing I check before I check like the numbers in total is just whose lives are we affecting right now and it's just it's just beautiful to wake up and to see that and you know it just keeps growing and growing and growing and 
Um, we were able to get like one of the biggest venture capital firms to invest in us like early stage We have a bunch of angel investors on board and we're still in the middle of a round right now Which I can't tell you more about um, because legally thick reasons, mm -hmm. but That should be closing soon. and That should be very public knowledge soon um, and we are just able to, you know, we, we're able to build this community and we're continuing to hire employees. We have now full, five full-time employees, three interns, uh, five outsourced development team. We have this amazing office in Venice um, with a, you know, full-size bocce wall court. So we have a giant garage where we have a bunch of desks and we have this old VW bug that we take meetings <laughs> in. Um, and then, yeah, if you ever make out to California, you have to come I was going to say, do you have any job openings? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, wow. And every Wednesday night, we host a breathwork session at the house, just kind of build a bigger sense of community and just show people what breathing is and what breathing does. Um, there's just so many different modalities and, and ways to breathing out there that we want people to explore. <clears throat> um, yeah, and it's just it's just been extremely extremely fun, and you know, it just it had all happened so fast, and I was not expecting it to go to go this far. And you know, we're in talks with a bunch of different like influencers and celebrities and. And it's, it's just amazing just to, just to see it impact people. We, we will actually launch a TikTok this week and we have over like a million views in some of our videos. And, wow. Uh, so. wow. I mean, I have to say you launched November 1st, 2019, right? Like that was only, I can count on one hand how many months ago that was. And you guys have grown so substantially since then. Yeah. And... It is because there was that white space in the market, right? Like, you're so right. There are all of these amazing meditation apps out there that I do use myself that I love and benefit from. But I have heard from podcasts and audiobooks I listen to the importance of breathing. And I've always believed in the importance of breathing. But I thought that the only way to access that was going to a really expensive workshop or taking a class because there were no accessible apps like Breathwork out there. And when I f discovered your guys's app through Instagram, it instantly changed the way that I live my day to day, how I manage my anxiety when I'm out in public, because it is so accessible. It's so easy to use. And it is so true. The power of your breath is such a healing tool. And I've only been using it for almost a month at this point, and I have found tremendous benefits from it. And I, I kind of want to talk a little bit now about our breath, right? And the healing and the scientific benefits behind our breath. And I was reading up on our breath and lung capacity and all this random stuff <laughs> before talking to you today. And I read something on LiveScience.com that said, adults typically take 15 to 20 breaths a minute, which comes to about 20,000 breaths a day. So that is a lot of breathing. And it is so easy for us to take that for granted. And I think it's so shocking at how many of us walk around every day breathing incorrectly. And that was something that I learned the second that I used your app is you guys give a beautiful tutorial on how to correctly breathe. So can you walk me through what is the correct way to breathe and why is this breathing technique the right way versus the wrong way, which is how we all breathe day to day? Yeah. Yeah, well, I'll give you a crazy statistic and a takeaway that a lot of people are going to probably ponder over when they hear it. But 90% of people are actually breathing at only 50% of their capacity. So oh, that means yeah. we're getting 50% of the amount of oxygen to our bodies. And, you know, your body needs oxygen to run. Your brain needs so much oxygen to, to think properly. So a lot of people are actually not living to their fullest because they're actually breathing improperly. Mm. And a lot of people breathe very shallow. So they breathe with their chest and their shoulder muscles, which not only puts strain on your chest and shoulders, but it puts you in a more sympathetic state. And if you know about um, the autonomic nervous system, um, like you, you know that the sympathetic state is, is basically fight or flight. So it's, you know, it, it's just a natural state that we exist in. It's a higher elevation of, 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 a, of a heart rate. It's a, you know, more anxious, more nervous, more fidgety. It's just a state that was made for a survival mechanism for people. And when you breathe shallow, you put yourself closer and closer and more in that state and you exist in that state. So a lot of people right now are existing in a heavily anxious state. 
But when you actually breathe with your with your diaphragm, with your, you know, we call it belly breathing, when you breathe properly through your nose and into your belly, you're actually activating more of a parasympathetic state, which is the state we should exist in, which is the rest and digest state. Um, see, so it's the other side of the coin of the of the autonomic nervous system. And and what that does is it allows you to relax and think clearly and you're not anxious, you're not fidgety, your heart's not racing, you can just kind of be more calm, your muscles are more relaxed, and that's the state we should exist in. But most people, as, as they're growing up, the, you know, you start to breathe with their chest, and then they're always sitting down for school. You know, we spend eight hours a day at school when we're children, and you're sitting down is actually really bad for, for breathing because you're not really breathing with your belly and with your, your stomach. Um, and then you just learn these behaviors over time and over time, and, and they become a part of a habit. So now everyone's breathing in their chest. So 90% of us are breathing in our chest, 50% capacity. And we're in more anxious states because of that. And then add the phone where your head's always bent down and you're, you're breathing even more shock, breathing into your throat. Um, so, so what happens is it's, it's, it's just everyone's you know, breathing improperly and, and that, that's okay. I think that's one thing people shouldn't be too scared or worried about. It's just a lot of people are, are breathing improperly. But the actual proper way to breathe to get as much oxygen into your lungs as possible and to put less stress on your shoulders and your back and and your sympathetic nervous system is to breathe with your belly. So one simple way that we teach people in the app and and we teach people in, in, in classes is, is you know put a hand on your chest and put a hand on your stomach. And then when you take a big deep breath in, your stomach should go out as far as possible. And then when you take a, a deep breath out, your your stomach should go flat. So you know you could do that and you could really get to gauge how you're doing. And the goal of doing this, so you put your hand in your chest and your stomach, you should, you know, try to keep your chest as still as possible. And, you know, check in a couple of times a day to see if, you, if you're breathing with your belly or with your chest. And, you know, I think people can come to realize it pretty quickly when you actually start breathing with your belly, like you tend to feel more calm and you just feel better because you're actually getting more oxygen. Mm -hmm. And some people, when they start breathing with their belly, they, they get, you know, tingly or a little bit lightheaded. But that's because they, they've been so deprived of oxygen for so long that it's just a weird feeling to kind of get something that's like good and healthy for you. Isn't that kind of ridiculous? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, yeah, because you guys have a little memo in the app. If you get lightheaded, stop breathing. Yeah. <laughs> and it's true. I've definitely <laughs> felt that way. Um, wow. So what is the connection, Max, with breathing to our nervous system? And what is the scientific benefit to how deep we breathe and how properly we breathe to healing our anxiety or going to sleep like how is that all connected because like I said I don't think we realize how important our breath really is to the overall function of our body yeah well interestingly enough like we are one of the only animals that has the ability to control and manipulate our breathing pattern other animals is all like automatic and that's why it's the atomic system because it's more automatic and it just happens naturally. So we don't think about breathing all the time. Um, but interestingly enough, when we change and manipulate our breathing patterns, we can actually evoke a reaction to our nervous system. So when you're breathing in the you know, deep diaph diaphragmatically with a you know, four second inhale and an eight second or six second exhale, you're actually telling a signal to your brain that you're in a calm state. So if you breathe in the pattern of the state you want to be in, then your body follows that state and puts you in that state. So it's almost a cool thing where it's like a sending a signal from your breathing to your brain back to your body on what you should feel. So, you know, we just posted a video the other day of, of breathing when someone had the Apple Watch on and showing their heart rate decrease as they're going through the breathing because it works and it just shows that every single time it works. Um, so basically, there's been some studies out there that shown that for every single emotional state that we're in, that um, there is a different breathing pattern for that. So, you know, whether you're happy, you have a different breathing pattern. Whether you're sad, you have a different breathing pattern. Whether you're sleeping, you have a different breathing pattern. And when you're able to study those patterns and when you're able to to actually do that yourself, you're able to make yourself feel, you know, tired or, or awake or energetic or euphoric um, or calm. And that's kind of the way it works. And it, it's there. There's still a lot of research that has to be done within it. But it's just something that it's very measurable. You know, you could see your blood pressure dropping if you're doing, you know, a calming breath. You could see your heart rate lowering. You could feel the, the feelings of, of more calm and you could just feel more awake and alert because you have more oxygen going to your body. So these are very measurable effects that happen. And brain scans also show the effects happening to your body um, instantly. And I think that's one beautiful thing 
a breath work over meditation is that with meditation, you can't really feel the effects right away. It takes a long, long time. But I think a lot of people can identify with breathing because, you know, once you do a certain exercise, you, you notice it and you feel it. And it's like, oh, this works. And, you know, my whole philosophy and a big reason behind breath work is, you know, if you're going to be breathing your entire life, why not breathe right? And why not have the right tools to empower your life to breathe when you need it? Um, you know, whether it be in the morning and you're tired and you want to go grab the third cup of coffee at the office, you could do a breathing exercise that can wake you up and make you feel more focused um, instead of doing something like that. Or whether, you know, you're going to do a big presentation or you're speaking in front of a bunch of people, you can do a breathing exercise to calm you down, to make you feel more present and in the moment. Or you can't sleep at night, you could do a breathing exercise for that. And also on the other side of breathing is athletic performance too. So you can use your breathing and the way you breathe to actually increase you know, your athletic endurance. You could use it to increase your, your, your body's ability to, to um, uptake oxygen. Um, you can use it to increase the ability to hold your breath for divers and swimmers. So there's so many, so many ways that breathing gets incorporated and tied into our lives that, that we offer to everyone and we want people to continue to, to, to optimize their breath. Like our mission is you know, to empower people to control their minds and bodies with breathing because it is such a powerful tool. And like when you start to realize there are just so many moments of your day when you could just breathe and, and get through it, it just, it just, you just feel so much more powerful. And that's, that's our mission. Before we move on with the story, I want to reiterate something Max said that I love. He said, quote, Breathwork's mission is to empower people to control their minds and bodies with breathing, end quote. Empower. To some degree, we all want to feel powerful and in control, especially during the very uncertain time we are all living through today. There is so much we cannot control, and that is why we need to focus our energies on what we can control, which is our breath. One thing about the Breathwork app that intrigued me was the time intervals offered for each breathing technique. They are super short. I'm talking, you guys, a minute to five minutes for each breathing technique. This was a shock for me, a girl who was told to meditate for at least 20 minutes every single day. So since this was always something that intrigued me, I had to ask Max about the reasoning behind these short time intervals. Here's what he had to say. Well, well, there's two reasons here. One's a scientific and one's like a consumer reason. So we realize that the average consumer doesn't have much time and we want people to realize that they can benefit from this even if you only have like a minute or two of time. Um, the effects from breathing can happen very, very quickly. So because it happens so quickly, we're able to put these little time limits on there like showing, hey, if you only have a minute, you can do it for a minute and it will still be as effective if you do it for two minutes. Um, and then we also, you know, we, 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 you know, recommend the time for people to use because that's just a more optimal time. So when you breathe in this pattern for, for a minute, like you'll stay in this state for a little bit. But if you breathe in this pattern for two minutes or three minutes or eight minutes, you'll stay in this state for a lot longer. So just we realize that like people are always short and crunch for time. So you could benefit from it immediately or you could put you, if you do have the time, you could put yourself in kind of a deeper state that you're trying to achieve by doing it for more time. Um, it's pretty, it's pretty crazy how, how quickly this can work. And, you know, I always do this. If you have an Apple watch or if you have a heart rate monitor or something that tracks your heart rate, you could open up calm and, and do a breathing exercise and, and see your heart rate go down within seconds, you know, within under a minute it is already starting to happen and you're just feeling better already. And, and, uh, so we, we offer that, that time period for people where it's like, Hey, we have a quick, we know you don't have a lot of time, but here's just an idea of what you can do and what you can achieve. And, you know, if you do it for under that, you're probably not going to feel too much. If you do it for that, you'll probably feel a little bit. If you have the medium one, you'll feel it definitely more. And if you have the maximum one, then you will definitely be in the state for an extended period of time. Um, and then also, you know, with extended use of breathing exercises, you do, you know, train your body to breathe more properly over time. So you can exist in that state for longer and longer and, you know, kind of make it a force of habit to always be more calm. And, um, you know, yeah. Wow, that's great. That makes a lot of sense. I, I think people, consumers gravitate towards those products that don't require a lot of time and a lot of effort on their end. So that's a really smart tactic on your guys's part. Now, yeah. 
I'm curious, Max, how do you apply? I'm assuming you use breath work every day as well. Yeah. What are your favorite breathing techniques that you use? How do you apply it in your everyday life? Yeah, so obviously I wake up in the morning and I usually do an energizing breath or energize 2.0. That's that's um that one's really, you know, it was based off the Wim Hof method, which Wim Hof is that guy who can do, you know, run marathons through the snow and oh, do this. Oh yes. Wait, quick side note, have you watched the Goop Lab on Netflix? I, I did watch the Goop Lab. We were actually <laughs> we were actually funny enough, we were actually featured in Goop as one of the best apps in breath work. Are you uh, really? That's amazing. Yeah, oh my so gosh, congratulations. What an honor. Yeah, so Wim Hof is a complete character, but there's so much science behind his method and it's working and you know, you can do things like I, I hate cold and waking up in the morning, cold is the worst thing, getting out of bed for me. So I do a Wim Hof method, wake up, take a shower and kind of get my day going and you know, what that does is it increases blood alkalinity, it increases blood oxygenation and it makes you feel more awake and alert. Um, so that's kind of my morning practice. I either do an energizing or energize 2.0. I do a couple rounds of that get up in the morning and then, you know, probably get into work and then just do a calming breath to feel more relaxed and present. Um, throughout the afternoon, I'll do something that's more balancing and then whether I need it, I'll do another, you know, pick me up. So it would be an energizing breath. And then in the afternoon, I like to like do like deep relaxation or unwind and then a sleep breath. I, I put it, you know, next to my pillow at night and, um, and I just kind of go through a sleep breath and it's pretty crazy how quickly the sleep one works. Like, <laughs> <laughs> You know, it, like it works for like it, it's just, it's just funny talking to people because I always wonder I'm like, you know, it works for me, but is it gonna work for everyone else? And we have people, we have like investors calling from across the world saying like, this is working. I want to talk to you. I want to get involved in your company in some type of way. And it's like, whoa! It's like it's not only working for me. It's working for these powerful people who have these you know crazy high stressful jobs where they're investing in companies across the world and managing you know you know lump sums of money for people and. You know, when we're also talking to older people who who find it very relaxing, or you know, like our one of our missions is is to to help people not be dependent on prescription drugs because we think our world is getting over prescribed prescription drugs right now. Um, so anything we could do to help and, and stay away and have people, you know, turn to breath work as the first option. You know, obviously for certain people like that is a necessity, but we want people to explore different options before they have to go down the route of taking something that you know you don't really know the long term effects to your body and. Um, and we all know breathing is, is, is pretty is a pretty safe thing because we all do it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm right there with you. Now, what are the next, I guess, breathing exercises that are going to be installed on the Breathwork app that we can see coming soon? Yeah. So I guess we I could look at the app a little bit and tell you about it. But um, so we just want to continue to expand the content. So we also want to create programming for people because – you know, we, we automatically set reminders for people of when you should breathe and what exercises to do during the day. But we realize that everyone's different, everyone's unique. So we're creating um, a, a new form of reminder systems that you can follow, like, you know, one of your favorite celebrities and follow their breathing pattern throughout the day or follow a Navy SEAL or an Olympic athlete. And you could follow their daily practice. So that's one big feature we're rolling out in the next month or two is to is to build this daily practice based off, you know, an expert or someone who's already doing that. So we're working with all these amazing, cool people to, you know, integrate new exercises, whether it be if you're a runner, how to, you know, properly breathe through running or how to properly breathe during a lifting exercise. Or if you're just someone who's more, wants to be more meditative and more relaxed and more zen, you could follow, you know, someone who evokes that energy and you could fit that into your daily practice. So that's another big thing that we're building. And we realize that there are just so many different breaths out there to take. It's just almost like an endless amount. I keep it up more and more every day. And, you know, we're constantly breathing and testing, testing them to see, you know, if they work and if they make sense to put in the application. Um, but there's just so much more to come. And there's just so many different areas where we think that we could fit breaths in. And we're just kind of building the app to incorporate to so many different areas of your, of your life. And um, so the one big thing to expect in the future is definitely more breathing exercises we, we, we silo our breathing exercises into four different categories. So we have mind exercises, which are more parasympathetic. So it's more rest and digest, helps you relax, relax your muscles, relax your mind, you know, decrease anxiety, decrease heart rate, decrease blood pressure. And then we have the other um, silo of, of body. So the body exercises are more energizing, increase your focus, feel more, you know, we have one called euphoric, which is, which is a pretty intense one. Uh, feel more euphoric, uh, feel more alert, feel more energized, feel more awake. Then we have a sleep silo. So, you know, in sleep, obviously helps 
you know, nighttime exercises to help you unwind or, or relax or fall asleep at night. And then we had the performance silo, which is where people can go to optimize their performance. So whether it be you're a singer and you know, you want to practice, you, you know, working at your diaphragm or you're a runner and want to practice, you know, running breath, or you're just someone who's about to go on stage and, and talk, or you have a meeting or you have a podcast to go and, and talk to someone you just want to feel more balanced and prepared. And in the moment, we have exercises for that. And we're going to continue to develop these exercises around these four main categories. Um, and then create the programming too. Like we're going to be working with experts to create programming so people could understand more about the breath and more how to apply it to their daily lives. And it's just, there's just so much out there to do. And we, we think that we, we kind of found this amazing, amazing, like vast network of knowledge and we keep learning more and more every day. So that's, you know, what we have right now, but you know, we, we don't know what we'll discover next month or even next week because we just keep meeting more people and more people have all these amazing practices that they want to bring to breath work. Exactly. Wow. That's just so phenomenal to me how much you guys have grown and developed in a matter of four months. It's truly phenomenal. Where do you envision breath work to be in five years? Yeah. So we want to be the best in breath and we want people to think when you think breathing, you think about us. Um, because we want to create something that actually helps and empowers people. So behind our mission of, you know, empowering people to control their minds and bodies, we want that to be everyone. We want everyone to be able to have this superpower that exists within us to be unleashed. Um, it's just something that we, we, we think that we, we have the knowledge and the expert base and the connections to do. Um, you know, we have the experts in breathing, we have the, the scientists, we have the marketing uh, geniuses, we have the product people, we have everyone to go and make this as big as possible and you know, just continue helping people build healthy habits all across the world is, is where we want to be. And we, we want to be, you know, we already are a global brand right now and it's crazy that technology allows you to do that so fast and so quickly. But we want to be just everywhere. We, you know, even within our advertising, like we can, you know, put a billboard up and people can actually start breathing, like you know, in Times Square, or you know, you're on for a call and you know, you're just sitting there. You could, you could throw an advertising there for breathing exercises. So we just want to be everywhere, aiding people through breathing and having people more conscious of their breath and the power that exists within them. So within five years, we just, you know, obviously we just want to be everywhere. We, we want to help as many people as possible, and you know, it just something so great and there's just so many opportunities out there to go and do that and you know we could have brick and mortar stores which we plan to have you know in the future like well, as i said before we're doing you know every wednesday at our at our office we have a free breathwork session for anyone in the community who wants to stop by and we're testing out you know if, we, if it would make sense to go into brick and mortar and start to open up you know different stores and be like a soul cycle for breathing um wow. across the country it could be it's definitely something in our pipeline and also products too um I'll talk about a few of them that we have in the pipeline or I can't, I can't share too much, but one of them is, is this, is this light that, you know, you can charge at night and put it by your bed. And this, this light is, you could think about as like a night light. It looks, you know, sits in your counter, but you can also bring it with you to work or to your, your dinner table. And this light will play different breathing patterns from the app. So if you want to go to sleep at night through the, with the breathing light, you can go with that. If you want to be in the office before a meeting and have everyone do a couple breaths before the meeting, you can look at the light and do that. Or if you know you want to wake up and you, that's your alarm clock is the light, we could do that too. So that's the other ways to incorporate breath. And then sounds another big thing with us too. So we're working with a bunch of amazing, amazing artists to create different sounds that people can listen to and breathe to, and have different rhythms and tempos because you know we we see in five years, you know maybe not everyone's gonna be on the screen anymore, and like maybe we'll break the screen addiction, but sounds always gonna be there. So just having the correct sounds <clears throat> um, for people to for people to breathe too, I think is going to be very important. Wow. Phenomenal. I am excited. I will be your first customer in line for mm -hmm. any product that you release. And the day that I see your billboard in Times Square, <laughs> I'm going to send you a video of me screaming my head off. <laughs> oh my gosh, Max, I am so grateful for you and your co-founder for bringing this to the market and for changing lives. It really, I see it becoming a phenomenon and I'm very happy to be here at the cusp of the very beginning of it and I just cannot thank you enough for coming on the show and spreading the word about breath work and how important breathing is to our overall health so thank you so so much and I will be linking the app in my show notes so that our listeners have easy access and that they can start breathing with us awesome yeah and my my advice for your listeners too is you know 
sharing with a friend is, is one of our biggest things and we're seeing a lot of users come in through sharing like 14 percent of our users have been referred by another friend so when you're using it for yourself and you find it working you know share it with some other people who can find it working too like i always think of my friends if someone's feeling anxious or someone can't sleep i just send them the app and try it out mm-hmm. um, so just just spreading spreading the love is definitely something to to put out there You guys know that my favorite question I ask on this show is always the last question, which is, how does my guest cultivate curiosity? Max shared that he cultivates curiosity in his everyday life by always surrounding himself with people smarter than him. He is the kind of guy to soak in everything they have to say in order to become a better and smarter version of himself. I love that. I mean, isn't that why we're all here? To become better versions of ourselves? I think so. That's why you're listening to this podcast right now. So I believe that you think the same way. I cannot thank you enough for tuning in this week, my friend. Stop by in two weeks where there will be a new episode waiting for you. In the meantime, stay healthy and stay inside. My friends, we have come to the end of this week's Cultivating Curiosity podcast episode. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I absolutely love having you here. If you resonated with today's message, please head over to the review section and give me either a rating or a review. Also, I spend most of my time on Instagram, so please come follow me at Sabri Parati. That is S-A-B-R-I. P-I-E-R-O-T-T-I and say hi. (laughs) Thanks again, you guys, and come back in two weeks for a brand new episode. Until then, stay curious.